Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending today's webinar, Energy Storage Made Simple. Get ESS projects to the finish line with Chimp Power Systems turnkey solutions and energy tool-based analysis. I'm Billy Liu, Associate Editor with Solar Power World. Now, before we get started, there are a few things you should know. This webinar will be sent to all registrants, so you can view it again. Slides are available to view at any time via the resource widget at the bottom of your screen. Submit any questions related to today's webinar via the Q&A widget at the bottom of your screen. We will try to answer these during the webcast. If we do not get to your question, our presenters may reach out to you after the broadcast. And finally, if you are watching this on demand, you can still use all of these features. So let's get started with today's webinar, Energy Storage Made Simple. Get ESS projects to the finish line with CPS turnkey solutions and energy tool based analysis. Today's speakers are Daniel Hill, Energy Storage Sales Manager at CPS America, and Scott D'Ambrosio, Vice President of Sales for Energy Tool Base. And now I'm going to turn it over to Daniel. Great. Thanks a lot, Billy. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for attending today. Um, so as Billy explained today, we're going to talk about the CPS turnkey energy storage system. And my hope is that by the end of the presentations, you'll feel comfortable with the system and the functionality. Our goal is to be a strong partner from analysis to permitting to installation, and then finally to monitoring. So I'm Daniel Hill. Um, I have been in the um, industry for uh, 12 years. Seven of those years were with solar sales and design at a Northern California EPC. And the last five years have been in, in storage with Resi and commercial. Wanted to tell you a little bit about CPS America and our parent company, Chint Global. Um, CPS America is the number one market share holder for three phase string inverters. We've shipped 3.8 gigawatts and approximately 100,000 inverters in North America. Our parent company is a $9 billion revenue company. They're publicly traded. It's a very diverse energy company. Been in business for over 30 years and manufactures sort of every type of electrical component from PV modules to transformers. That diversity has really helped us with our innovation in our string inverters. We also have excellent engineering and service across the US, which includes 20 locations engineers and field service people. So sort of want to take you through A to Z in terms of how to go through the process of understanding the system that you need for your customer. First thing we want to do is we want to figure out what the functionality is. So are they, A, are they looking for savings, like demand charge, they're trying to bring their demand charges down, time of use arbitrage, um, especially here in California where you have really high priced energy in the afternoon. So charge up your inverter your, your batteries in the morning and then discharge them in the afternoon. B would be a backup system for resiliency or to form a micro when the grid goes down. Or you could have both. Set up a system that both saves you money and gives you microgrid backup. So the first thing you need to do if we're looking for savings, and Scott will go through this in more detail later, but you need to get the customer usage data. We need to understand what the loads are, what the um, uh, you know time in which the, the peaks are occurring, and time in which the energy is being used for time of use. 
For resiliency or microgrid, we need to understand the backup loads and the inrush current. We need to know what we're going to be supporting when the grid goes down. So in energy tool base, you would run the analysis with the data. And again, we'll talk about that a bit later in order to understand the savings that you're going to get from a given system. On a backup system, create, again, the size recommendations based on the loads. So we have different levers that we can sort of play with to size system to save the most amount or to back up the loads. The first is power or storage inverter power or kilowatts. The second, kilowatt hours or battery sizing. The third is controls. Which controls are we going to use? How are those controls going to be used to do what we want the system to do? And then depending on functionality, we might size disconnects or circuit breakers um, a little bit differently. So again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the sweet spot for the size and power of the system. Okay. So I wanted to talk a little bit about um, sort of where, where we um, started this year and where we are now with our systems. So our initial system was a 30 kilowatt building block. Here's the inverter here. We did either a 30 or a 60. 60 would have two of the inverters. As you can see, the inverters are placed on the outside of the battery enclosure. This enclosure has one rack. This enclosure has two racks. And then we've got our wiring box here for each of the systems. Also have air conditioning to help us keep the unit at the temperature in which we need in order to be compliant with the warranty. We've sold out of these systems. We're moving on to our next generation now, which is a 125 kilowatt, 268 kilowatt hour. As you can see, everything on this system, you don't see anything hanging off the sides of this one. We've incorporated everything um, uh, to be placed within the enclosures. Ship date right now is uh, late Q4 starting to get orders, and so we will be allocating these um, again beginning late Q4. Okay. So I want to talk about some of the general points here. So on the previous slide, we saw that there were two cabinets. One cabinet is an inverter and controls cabinet or enclosure the other carries the battery. So the inverters are rack mounted inverters. So I'll show on the next slide the racks in here and you just put the, um, the inverters in to get the size that we need. Size range is from 62 and a half kilowatts to 375 kilowatts. The energy tool based control hardware, the energy management system is also contained within this unit. And then lastly, the electrical hardware, like the disconnects, circuit breakers, and AC connections are also in here. On the battery side, these new systems, we're working with CATL, they contain an LFP battery. It's 268 kilowatt, kilowatt hours, and they're stackable. So we can add, um, uh, add batteries to this to get to larger sizes than 268 kilowatt hours. We have 15 modules. Also, in addition to the batteries, we also have the battery management system hardware and some additional hardware in there. Overall, the system is compliant with UL 9540A we have a performance guarantee and a 10-year warranty, and it's NEMA 3R outdoor controlled.
So I want to talk a little bit about specifications and sizing. So I mentioned that the inverters are rack mounted. And so each of these little boxes is one of the 62 and a half kilowatt inverters. So for our smallest system, you would have one inverter here. And so you would have 62 and a half kilowatts or 75 amps. For 125 kilowatt, you would double this up for 150 amps. 250, you would have four of these. And then the maximum size is 375, which would be six of our rack mounted inverters. The efficiency of the system is 97% CEC. The operating temperature is a wide negative 13 to 140. As I mentioned on our previous systems, we have a temperature control system. We also have that with this system. So we'll keep the batteries within the warranty compliance, but for high temperatures, we'll be bringing the temperature down with our control system, and for lower temperatures, we'll be heating it to bring it within the range we need to be in. Communication within the system is RS-485. The EPC or the electrician would bring the ethernet cable into the system, and that's all we need in terms of communications. So talking a little bit about battery sizes. So again, this is one battery enclosure, and it's 268 kilowatt hours, and it contains 15 of the modules. So for instance, if we had a two enclosure system with 536 total kilowatt hours, and if you had a 125 kilowatts, so two of these inverters, that would be a four hour system. If you have 250 kilowatts, which would be four of these inverters, that would be a two hour system. If you do three enclosures, that would be a two hour system for a 375 kilowatt system, which would be all of the inverters. And then our maximum is 1,608 kilowatt hours, which would be six of these enclosures. The rough dimensions of these two enclosures here is approximately 10 feet wide by seven and a half feet high by four and a half feet deep, approximately. Okay, so we get lots of questions on certifications and testing. So let's talk a little bit about that. So first off, we're compliant to the UL 9540A standard with the system. We're also compliant with California Rule 21, SIP certified, also to the UL 1973 standard, and then, as I mentioned, we're NEMA 3R with corrosion resistance. So we do a thousand hour salt spray on this enclosure, which is especially important if we're near salt water. The inverters are 1741 SA compliant, and then We've almost completed our IEEE 2030.5 CSIP for the inverters. On the batteries, we've got the UL 95, I'm sorry, UL 1973 standard. And as I mentioned, UL 9540A standard, and that's for the cells, the modules, and the racks. So at this point, I'm gonna pass it over to Scott, who's gonna talk about how we control these systems and what we can do to save. Perfect. <clears throat> thank you, Daniel. I appreciate it. Um, one, thank you for everybody's time. I just appreciate it. We all know you have busy schedules, so I just wanna say thank you. We also understand these are unprecedented times. I hope everyone is being safe and their loved ones are safe and healthy as well. The silver lining, as you said at home, this is an opportunity to sharpen your tool set and make you more successful and profitable once normality returns. 
One of those tools and partners helps search your tool base. To our current ETB users on the line, I just want to let you know how much we appreciate the opportunity to work with you and how much we appreciate your business. Thank you. For those of you not familiar with Energy Toolbase, hopefully after this webinar or in the future, you'll give us an opportunity to earn your business. My name is Scott D'Ambrosio. I'm the Vice President of Sales. For those of you not familiar with Energy Toolbase, we are a software company. We have a industry-leading cloud-based proposal platform that specializes in the economics behind alternative energy deals. Our software is transparent, objective, and accurate. We thrive in complexity, but present it simply to our user base. On September 10th of last year, Energy Toolbase merged with Payson Power, a subsidiary of Payson Systems, a 40-year-old oil and gas company traded on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Payson Systems' core technology specializes in controls on oil breaks, data aggregation, and monitoring. Payson Systems is on 75% of all the land-based oil rigs globally. Well, five years ago, they spun up a renewable energy arm called Payson Power which created highly sophisticated artificial intelligent machine learning algorithms control to control energy storage systems in the field. They created a solution that was flexible to operate in any type of market and accommodate any type of customer that optimized for economic value. We work with all types of customers from utility scale and front of the meter applications all the way to behind the meter small commercial clients. Energy tool base currently has over 1,200 individual organizations using the platform today. We operate in all 50 states, and we're gearing up for a huge new release that is going to allow us to bring our platform internationally. We're not the software company that tries to do everything. We concentrate on, on what we think would be best in the industry, which is accurate representation of avoided costs from behind-the-meter solar storage or hybrid projects. Our clients range from developers to EPCs, policy organizations, financiers, or anybody else who would see value in understanding accurate avoided costs on renewable energy projects. Nothing speaks louder to your client than dollars and cents, and being honest and accurate with your clients equals longevity in this industry. On the screen here, you'll see some of the customers that trust and use energy tool base for their calculations and their analysis. One of the competitive advantage of our software is our in-house utility team. We don't use third-party plugins. We manage and maintain our own database with full-time employees dedicated to make sure we have the most accurate up-to-date rate database in the market. This is the backbone of analysis. Our team maintains over 60,000 rates globally. They create custom rate schedules for those clients in deregulated markets, clients with unique rate schedules, or maybe clients who have specific riders or credits that make that opportunity unique. We, create, we, we can even create custom rate schedules for rates that don't even exist. Maybe you're anticipating future, pro, um, future rate changes coming. You can do that in our system, be able to model what those economics look like. Accurate analysis starts at recreating your client's energy bill correctly. There's a lot of things in the industry you can't control, but how you treat people is not one of them. Customer service is the fundamental building block of energy tool base from our platform to our controls. Every client gets a dedicated account manager on the platform to coach you on how to use the platform, support you to learn our system, and make you comfortable with our environment. We have a very hands-on approach, one-on-one -on -one support. We do group webinars. We do uh, tons of training videos and tutorials that you can sign up for. So we will provide you the tools to be successful in our platform. On the screen here, you'll see a picture of a ruggedized industrial computer that houses our IEMS, Intelligent Energy Management System. Initially, Payson Power created one of the most difficult types of controls, peak demand shaving. This control strategy is complex. It considers historical data, rate schedule information, predictive data, forecasting to accomplish peak demand shaving, reducing demand charges for your client. It has artificial intelligence, machine learning algorithms that will actually improve and perform better over time. Not only do we have sophisticated controls, we have a suite of control offering to accommodate our range of customers and programs across the country. With our control comes Energy Data Hub. This tracks and monitors all relevant solar plus storage information in real time. This is in one comprehensive platform to understand the system performance. You as the developer, as well as your client, get your own logins and get to see the performance of the system in real time. 
you can actually get as granular as you would like in our platform down by second by second information. And we even calculate actual achieved savings, so post analysis, which is huge. Uh, we collect and store all the warranty and incentive compliance information as well as auto fault resolution, making you aware of issues so you can correct them immediately. On the screen here is just a little snippet of our integration in the platform, and I'm going to go into this a little bit further here shortly. Um, but as you walk through step five of an energy tool base, you can always go through the ETB door, which is that first icon in the top left. Right? But as you go through that door, you, there's going to be numerous user inputs from hardware to software to be able to model storage properly. To remove this complexity, we created a integration workflow. We worked extremely close with Chint, our engineers, their engineers, to be able to calibrate the back end to give our clients accurate represent, representative results of what they're going to achieve in the field using our systems. With our combined company's history, CPS, great systems, competitive pricing, fully wrapped warranties, paired with our sophisticated controls, mod monitoring and modeling, and our performance guarantee really has a compelling option for you. And I think a winning strategy. All right, inputs and assumptions need to model in energy tool base. So the first thing there is, is consumption data from your client. Now, we do accept data in multiple different form, formats, multiple different types of interval data, as well as monthly data. Um, but we need to understand how your client uses energy. So what you put in is what you get out. Even though we do accept monthly data, the more granular information you give us, the more accurate results we're going to give you. And how a client uses energy is important. Right? Are they spiky? Do they have long shoulders? Is it a cold storage system? Um, when we're trying to achieve economic value for your client, understanding the behavior, how your client uses energy is important. Um, the next thing you're going to see there is utility information. There's different frameworks and rate schedules and metering configurations all across the country. This is going to play a huge impact on the battery's decision making. Uh, there's demand charges. There's TOU demand. There's ratchet demands. All of these uh, different types of rate structures come into play. Energy tool base, the current strategies that we model today, peak demand shaving, time arbitrage, self-consumption, and we could stack those strategies as well. The next assumptions, you'll see PB, uh, PB array, so we will have the ability to take a look at those solar curves and make decisions based on those. And lastly are going to be your predefined inputs from hardware and controls. And then we did simplify that through the integration workflow. When you're looking at return on investment for storage projects, what are you looking for? Well, high demand charges, north of $15. Okay? You're looking for wide differentials between time of use energy. Also, you're looking for the value. What is the difference between exporting that value and retail value? Also, there's lucrative incentives all across America. There's federal incentives, there's state incentives. So you're looking for states, utilities, counties that offer these type of incentives for you. And lastly, certain type of load profiles you're looking for. Spiky loads comparable to somebody with 24-hour shoulders. All right, I am going to go share my screen into Energy Toolbase to get into some more detail here. And I should be sharing. I don't see it on the audience. There it is on the audience view. So everybody's looking and taking a look at Energy Toolbase. If you haven't seen it before, welcome to the platform. I already jumped into a lead here. Lead is basic information to the right. Uh, over here, you'll see the word facilities, and these represent meters to us at Energy Toolbase. So we can do multimeter analysis. So the first thing we're going to do is recreate your client's energy bill. And this is where we give you options. What type of data do you have from the client? We accept interval data in multiple different forms, multi-column, single-column, XML, CSV. Uh, we have APIs uh, through the integration, uh, through the platform that kind of connect top-tier service providers for our developers. Okay. So I jumped into a proposal on the next screen here and walking through a seven-step regression we're going to show you a proposal, what the financials look like on a sample here. Uh, step one is general assumptions. This does come into play on some of the financial ratios that we're going to export at the end. Uh, you'll notice here, pretty straightforward. We could do before tax or after tax, showing tax consequences or not. Um, to the right here, different assumptions that you're making as the developer. Now, step two, this is utility tab here. Now, one, 
This example here is in California, San Diego Gas and Electric. I chose ALTOU. Um, you'll see here a drop down of all the utilities based on San Diego Gas and Electric. This is what our utility team is mining, making sure we have the most accurate up-to-date rates. You'll notice here the word effective date. Every time there's a rate change, our utility team's coming in here and noting that for you. One thing, transparency. We love transparency here at Energy Tool Base. Rate schedule details. When we talk storage all the time, there's this black box, right? Nobody wants to share any information. We want to remove that. Uh, so we will try to show you everything that you ask for. Rate schedule details, very important, right? Key information in here, what is applicable for this rate schedule. But understanding the charges behind this, right? We talked about demand charges. So I'm going to go to the demand tab here, right? We talked about different types of demand charges, non-coincidental to time of use demand. So what does that mean? Non-coincidental? is going to be your highest increment pull from the grid here regardless of time. So it's for the billing cycle. It could occur at midnight, occur at noon. On-peak, off-peak, or super off-peak demand are defined based on time of use rate schedule. So during a set time period, your highest pull from the grid during a set time period, which is really cool. Our controls now are going to make decisions for you. Is it more advantageous to offset? Okay. Can you guys see my screen? I am on rate schedule details. And I am just getting a little message that you guys can't share my screen. Uh, see my screen. Is that true? Yes. Haley can see your screen. Thank you, Adam. But Haley can see it. So I'm going to keep moving here. <laughs> um, so back to non-coincidental demand to on-peak demand here. You'll be able to, our controls will actually optimize and make decisions for you. Is it more advantageous to offset non-coincidental demand? Or are we going to target that TOU demand? And this is what our algorithms are going to do in the field. All right. So step two is our ability to do rate switch analysis. I'm going to keep it very simple here. I'm not going to do that just so you know our platform can consider different rate schedules. What is the effects of going from one rate schedule to another? All right. Step three is incentives. So we have a whole database of incentives. They're changing constantly. Um, you can pull from our archive database. You can let us know, hey, there's a new one coming out here. We could create uh, incentives that are coming out. You just check and include them. Pretty simple. We have all the SGIBs already up to date. All right, step four, this is either way. We could create storage-only proposals, hybrid, solar-only proposals. So you could come in here. Um, and really simple. We have an integration with PV Watts, our friends at Helioscope, or we're, we're Switzerland. You could use any production software and give us that 8760 data. Okay, this is, this is where we get into it, storage. All right, so when you come here for the first time, back to that snippet here, when you come in here, you can walk through the energy tool base screen, right? This is where we talked about all those different user inputs. What are the hardware characteristics? What are the control settings? And just to be clear, every EMS is not the same. Every hardware is not the same. So understanding these different parameters are really important for accuracy. Okay, so you're more than welcome to walk through this door, um, but we're gonna recommend that you do this and go through our friend CPS here and notice how simplistic the experience is gonna be now. Right, as you come in here, you'll see the different new designs that we uploaded today that Daniel was talking about here. So in the drop-down, you can see the different um, options that CPS offers with our intelligent controls. Okay, so when you choose this option here, you can choose the quantity, and we've got four different control settings for you. Once again, this goes into understanding the rate schedules and the metering framework behind it, right? So we can choose peak demand shaving and stack that with time arbitrage, and we can charge from PV only, okay? We can do peak demand shaving, time arbitrage, no charging restrictions. Now, I am not a tax professional. I can't give you tax advice. But if you do want to claim the ITC, charge from solar. Okay. Next is maybe the rate schedule has no demand. Okay. Well, then we're going to do time arbitrage, right? We want to be able to charge when it's cheap, discharge when it's expensive to bring economic value. So once you choose your control st strategy here, you can choose the quantity. But to help you size the system, we've got this nifty little ETB optimizer button. And when you click this optimizer button, you're going to see these different graphs run. 
And what's going to happen here, there's six different graphs. And I'm going to bring your attention to the bottom right graph on the screen here. This is total electric bill savings. Now, what we're doing is we're running different system sizes. We're considering the rate schedule, the metering configurations, the solar tied to it. Okay, And we're running these discharge and charge strategies for all these different sizes by clicking that button. And when you hover your mouse over this, you'll see I'm on total electric bill savings. So that's encompassing fixed energy and demand charges. So based on a 125, 260 ad, the additional incremental savings that storage is bringing to the table here is $12,774, okay? If we went to the next system size up, okay, you're getting another $2,000 of value, okay? Anything above that, you could see really flat here. So using the optimizer will help you, put you in the right direction. What is the correct system size for your client? Now, you can optimize doing different things. And notice here, blended savings might be one of the metrics that you optimize on. And what that is, is the incremental savings divided by the capacity of the battery. All right, so in this example, I'm going for my biggest bang for the buck here. I'm going with this 47. I'm gonna go with the smaller system here with the higher blended savings. Okay. Once you hit save, I'm going to hit cancel, you'll see this performance card spit out here. Some key metrics in here, how many cycles, discharge energy, and your blended savings per KWH. All right, lastly, when you get to step six here, we do have customizable transactions through the Chint integration. Uh, we do upload a transaction for you. Now, that accounts for replacement costs for the hardware as well as our software. So you'll see some key financial metrics in here. You hit add tra transaction. Now we can customize any of these transactions for you to mimic whoever you might be using in the field as a financier. All right, last is documents. So we're gonna present a beautiful comprehensive document to your client here. We have different templates. They are customizable if you would like. Now I am showing you the stock one in here. You'll see this is a cover page. Once again, customizable, your logo, your pictures, your text. You'll see project summary, so key financial highlights. You can add up to four different transactions in this scenario and compare those financial ratios against each other. All right, lastly here, you'll see pro, uh, PD system details. Okay? You'll see the cost minus any incentives. The next is our storage page. waiting for the screen to catch up here. So once again, you'll see the cost of the system minus any incentives that we put down. A really nice graph here of the utilization of the battery through 365 days. Uh, you'll see a nice chart broken down. What is the total demand savings being achieved on this project? We have rebates and incentives spelled out for you next. And here's the beaten potatoes. This client was currently paying $63,705 on the year. Well, post-project, we're able to get their bill down to 33307 for a total avoided cost of $30,398. Okay. Lastly is your cash flows. We did a 20-year cash flow. You can see your outflow of money. We got replacement costs. We got O&M in here as well. And key financial ratios and bump back. Now, lastly, uh, before I go back to the slides here, just wanted to show you ETB analytics on the back end here. So a lot of key information. We can show you what are savings after PV, but before storage. But really where I'm trying to go is our demand profile visualization. I'm just going to unpack this for a second, zoom into a day and time. So as you go in here, as you go in here, this is our interval data set, 15 minutes. Uh, every 15 minutes overlaying to the utility schedule here. So you can see on every 15 minutes how your client is pulling energy and behind the scenes we're overlaying our solar production, our battery performance to pull out our net profile. So you can see we're doing peak demand shaving here. We're discharging on that POU window, okay, to be able to mitigate those, those spikes, right, cut the peaks. And we're left with this net demand. So tons of information. My goal was not to go into a full-fledged uh, demo today, but I just wanted to show you what's going behind the scenes, how easy and how quickly you can optimize your proposal using the Chint system. Okay. I'm going to stop screen, sh screen sharing, and we should be back on the slideshow. The next steps for successful to close ESS projects here. Uh, so one, everybody does have a dedicated account manager with Energy Toolbase. 
They have links. They send it to you. Book a meeting with them. Work on a project together. Let them help you, right? Our goal is to teach you how to fish. Give a man a fish he eats today. Teach a man a fish he eats forever. Let us teach you. Ask as many questions as you want. And this is important, right? Because when you're sitting in front of the customer, you understand how it works, okay? Um, so we're here to support you. And next... And join us. We've got tons of documents. Go to our blogs. Read up about it. Our marketing team does a phenomenal job on the content they put out there to try to get you guys up to speed. And lastly, if you're not an energy tool based user, come join us. Right? Start a free trial. Let us earn your business. <clears throat> All right. Last, last slide here. I just want to say thank you. Um, and I'm going to yield back to Mr. Daniel Hill. Great. Well, thanks, Scott. Um, yeah, I mean, Energy Toolbase has been a real game changer. They really cracked the code. Um, they've got uh, an amazing utility tariff database. It's really the gold standard for the industry. And, um, you know, one of the most fun and interesting things that I get to do on a daily basis is meet with clients and the Energy Toolbase rep and to sort of look at jobs and try to figure out, you know, what the best size system is for a given um, a given. Uh, uh, client. So, um, wanted to talk a little bit more about sort of the turnkey system and why it's helpful and important throughout the process. It helps in permitting, it helps with the installation, and it helps with commissioning. It certainly helps with permitting because the system is all in one, it's pre wired, factory tested. We went through all of the um, uh, the testing we do relative to the um, uh, to the certifications and the standards. That really helps when you guys are doing permitting um, because they know that this is a cohesive system, and that's much easier for them to understand than it is a system that is using uh, you know maybe disparate parts or different parts that are sort of uh, cobbled together. It also helps, certainly on the installation. Installations, when all said and done, tends to take one or two days. Um, really, the, the, the commissioning is probably only um, a few hours, um, but it might take a little longer depending on, um, you know, making sure that we've got the communication set up and some of the testing that we do on site. So we, CPS, will go on site for all of the installations and we'll do the commissioning. So when we leave, the system is up and running. And then certainly for final inspection, again, it's easier for the inspector to see, okay, this is an all-in-one cohesive system. You can show them how the system works with the simple user interface. We wanted to talk a little bit about our sort of joint performance guarantee, our warranty, as well as our services. So the system is certainly engineered to perform as promised. The, the, the performance guarantee is based on energy tool base analysis. And so energy tool base produces a number, and then we promise to, to meet or beat that number. Hardware and the software are backed both by CPS and energy tool base. The battery is controlled and monitored, as I've mentioned previously, to keep within the warranted specifications. So we keep track of temperature. We make sure that it stays within a certain temperature rate. There are certain charge and discharge rates that we need to comply with, and we record that. We record the state of charge, the average state of charge, the max charge, the max discharge, voltage, frequency, to name a few. There are many, many different pieces of data that we record. The other thing I want to mention is our highly experienced field team. Much of our success is due to this fantastic field team that we have. So we've got service people across the country. Our R&D and service headquarters is in Richardson, Texas. Logistics are in LA, and then sales are in the San Francisco Bay Area. Okay. 
So that's it for me for Mo. Here's my email. Please send me an email. We'll have a, a Q&A here for the next 20 minutes. Happy to answer all your questions. And again, thank you. And to um, you know, echo what Scott said, um, hope everybody's staying safe and thanks so much for your time. This has been kind of an unprecedented time for storage in that people have a little bit more time on their hands and so they're able to learn how to incorporate storage into their solar um, sales to make solar plus storage. All right, uh, now we're gonna open up the floor for some questions. Uh, remember you can continue to submit questions at any time in the Q&A widget at the bottom of your screen. We, let's see what we have on deck. All right, so this one's for Daniel. Um, can you help to prepare our electricians for the installation? Yeah, so once um, we get a, you know, a job sort of set up, we will, uh, we'll, we'll set up a meeting and we'll go over some of the details of the communications um, as well as the, you know, the system placement and how it relates to the, to the building. So yeah, more than happy to do that. Okay, great. And for Scott, uh, what transaction template should I use or what transaction template should I be using when modeling a CPS ESS project? Yeah, so today everyone is getting an email we uploaded a new transaction for everybody. Now, once again, these transactions are completely customizable, so they can be tailored for anything you want, but the transactions, the newest, most accurate one, which you got an email about today, is called ETBIEMX. Okay, this is a 20-year cash flow, once again, completely customizable. Let us know what you need, but that is the most recent one that you should be using. Okay, great, uh, next question. Are all of your projects and equipment aimed at behind the meter, or do you participate in um, front of the meter projects as well? Um, so um, for the most part, we're doing behind the meter, but we certainly can do in front of the meter. And I'll, I'll kind of add to that. Um, you're seeing programs and incentives um, change across America, and our current control can, can accommodate in front or behind the meter opportunities. So um, typically the platform's behind the meter, but our controls can absolutely uh, play in any type of environment in front or behind. Okay, another one for Daniel. Um, I've never sold an energy storage system, or sorry, an ESS system. Uh, can you help with the analysis and the system sizing? Yeah, so like, like I mentioned, um, fun to get, get on to, you know, to a Zoom call, meet with the customer, or, or with customer being you, the energy tool base rep and me, and we can go through that and um, help you understand, you know, the different paybacks on the different sizes. So more than helpful to, more, more than willing to um, sort of walk through that with you and um, help you in any way. Okay, and for Scott, uh, does Energy Toolbase have all the most recent SGIP incentives in your database? Yes. Keep it short and sweet, yes. They should be all up to date. Um, and we even have a blog about it on our website if you wanted to read it. Okay. Is this meant for DC or AC coupling to the PV generation? Uh, these are all AC coupled systems. So usually you're gonna have a common um, sort of AC bus where you, the, the systems meet. All right. Do any of these support quote unquote large residential time of use slash backup situations? So that's a great question. There definitely are some, we, we, we are running into more and more of these sort of um, kind of residential compounds um, and we, we, we definitely can support those systems. I'll right. also um, mention, I also wanna mention, so um, one thing I didn't mention at the beginning is, is this is um, three phase 480 volts. 
um, <clears throat> we can, with a transformer, go down to 208 with, uh, with no problem. So that's, that's the way that we deal with that as we bring in a transformer and we just go from 480 down to 208. Okay. How much development support slash assistance with my, will my energy tool based account management give me if I'm using the integration and modeling uh, CPS storage project? Yeah, it, it's a great question and they're absolutely there to help you. Um, they'll spend as much time as they need to get you up to speed in our platform to make you proficient and make you successful. So we're, we're happy to do that. This is things they do all day, every day. Um, what are the delivery times for the energy tool base? Hey, Daniel, why don't, why don't so you do that? I think right probably now, meaning, uh, Yeah, I mean, energy tool base is is um, is available immediately. We are, um, as I mentioned, we're already um, coming into some some backlog on this Gen two, but we are looking at late Q four um, or early Q one. Sorry, one moment. Just looking for a question. Okay, is uh, Chint Power Systems going to be offering the older, smaller uh, ESS? So at this time, we're not offering it. You know, never say never, uh, but but certainly for the the time being, we've moved up to these larger units. Okay, and can the system be mounted indoors in a properly air conditioned room? Uh, it can be. Um, there's some, um, you know, some considerations that need to be made. Um, you know, a couple of ways of dealing with that. One is if it's in a sort of a larger space, then we wouldn't be affecting the air conditioning of that room. If it's a smaller space, then we want to look into venting so that we're able to vent out the hot air from the room. Okay. And how many kilowatts are available for the... Um... 268 kilowatt hour battery module. So the, the battery module, um, so basically you would, the, the max power you're gonna get out of that is with the 125 kilowatt inverter. So it's two of the 62.5s. And then, as I said, that's a two hour battery. So you can have that amount of power coming out of the battery through the inverters for two hours. Okay, um, I think this might be a follow-up question. So you will not sell the 30 kilowatt or 60 kilowatt models anymore? Correct. And someone asked, uh, can you please send out the deck you went over during the presentation? Of course. Yeah, go ahead and, and email me, you know, certainly if you have additional questions or if you want to go over um, one of your projects. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I'm happy to email the deck to you. Can a system be utilized for both peak shaving and grid forming? For example, if the grid goes down, the battery would allow the solar to continue to power certain circuits. Yes, it could be. Um, you know, as I mentioned, there are different, different softwares serve different purposes. And so um, we would need to make sure that we're, we're covering that um, with both of the software partners. The other consideration is when you're doing a backup system and doing sort of peak shaving or time of use, 
you want to make sure that you have a reserve in the battery in case you do get a, a, a grid outage. Um, so if you're sort of doing time in the time of use, say it's in the afternoon, discharging the battery in the afternoon, you want to save some for night um, when uh, when you wouldn't be uh, recharging the batteries with solar. Okay. Uh, and for CPS, how much success have you had recently on interconnections with Con Ed, both behind and in front of the meter projects? So we're working um, with Con Ed on that. So um, uh, we we don't have any problems. Um, there is a little back and forth, and it does it does take take a while. But again, if you email me, I'm, I'm happy to um, talk with you more about that, pro about a specific project. Is there any fire suppression for the system? So that's a great question. Um, so we don't include a fire suppression um, with the system from the factory. Um, we work with the AHJ to understand if that's something they want. Often they'll see, certainly moving forward, they're going to see it has 9540A, um, and many jurisdictions won't uh, ask for it or require it. Um, but we need to understand what kind of fire suppression the jurisdiction wants. So we're happy to um, sort of do that as a, as a, as a, a, a post-sale. Okay, uh, if the ESS is connected with direct coupling with the grid without a transformer, uh, how does it protect against utility voltage surges? Sorry. Uh, well, you, yeah, you would need to have a transformer. Okay. All right. Um, I think that's going to be all the time we have for questions today. Um, if you have any additional unanswered questions, feel free to contact our presenters on your own. Uh, this webinar will be shared with all registrants, so you may view it again at your convenience. I'd like to thank Daniel and Scott for being here and uh, Chint Power Systems for sponsoring today's webinar. And thank you to everyone in our audience for participating. I hope you enjoyed our presentation. And we invite you to join us for more Solar Power World webinars in the future. Thanks, everyone.